Hello and welcome everybody, regardless of where you're coming from. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Um, my name is David and I'm one of the track leads here for the Mountain Global Conference. I'm here to introduce Tone today. Uh, in case you're not familiar with Tone, Tone is a digital strategist uh, from Belgium. He's been using the uh, Mautic package for a little bit more than two years now. And over at Drop Solid, he focuses on the needs of the customers and he translates them into solid strategies that will work for them. Matter of fact, today's session is specifically about the strategy canvas and how you guys can get involved in getting started with this. And even if you've been involved for a while, I'm sure there's a number of takeaways that you're going to be able to, uh, to learn from today. So, uh, Tone, thank you for being here. And I'm going to leave it up to you. And uh, if anybody has any types of comments, be sure to leave that in the session feed. And any kind of questions and answers, there's also a little icon for that. Uh, we'll be taking any kind of uh, questions that you might have as the session is going on towards the very, very end. So, Tone, uh, thank you for being here and uh, take it away. Yes, thank you, David, for the introduction. Um, and also thank everybody. Uh, thanks to everybody who's joining in the session. Good morning or good afternoon, good night to you all. Um, and let's get started. Today I'm going to talk a bit about marketing automation and the strategy behind marketing automation in general. Um, but let me quickly start by introducing myself. So um, I'm Ton. Um, I work at DropSolid, a Belgian-based company, and I work as a marketing automation specialist over there. A quick intro about Ropsolid. We're a company based in Belgium, as I said. Um, we've existed for more than nine years now, with around 90 employees based all over Europe, and we have partners in three continents. Very shortly, um, what is the goal of Ropsolid? We make complex marketing technology like marketing automation, CMSs, um, and everything else complex, um, accessible for ambitious companies, organizations, governments to create the best digital version about that company. We do that most of the time using our open digital experience platform, where um, today the focus is on Nautic. You can see we have three parts in our platform. Content management is open source Drupal. Customer data platform is um, our Unomi uh, personalization tool and our marketing automation stack uh, where we use Nautic. Enough about that, um, and let's dive deeper into the presentation itself. Um, marketing automation and the strategy behind marketing automation. I think um, it's something that's coming up very, um, it's been an important thing over the years, but it's getting more important over the years. Um, we've at RobSolid created a marketing automation strategy framework um, that I'll show a bit uh, later in the presentation and a workshop that would help companies um, defining and organizing their marketing automation strategy. But let's start off with the why. Why is it important that you have a good uh, marketing automation strategy? Why is a strategy important in general? Um, what we've seen over the couple of years in our company, and this is strategy, um, not only on marketing automation, but strategy behind the marketing and campaign in general, is that there, when you don't use a clear stra strategy, there's not always the best outcome. So the, the problems that we've seen is uh, some companies don't use a clear strategy behind their campaigns. For example, they set multiple, uh, set up multiple marketing automation campaigns like 10 flows in one go, but they don't really know what to do uh, with those flows after it, or there's no clear strategy behind it. Also, uh, not having a strategy means that there's not always a structured way of working. Um, it's important to have a clear flow, uh, even when you set up your marketing automation tools. And I think just in general, structure is really important when you want to have a great marketing um, strategy. And um, I think the most important part is when you don't have a strategy, you always forget certain things. You forget um, certain follow-up emails, you forget assets, you can forget reporting. So this is really why an important strategy is uh, important. Um, in no means is the framework that you created uh, a golden ticket to the best marketing automation strategy that you can have. That's uh, not possible, but it's surely something that can help you with it and that can help you start to grow your business. Um, some things that that the framework will help you with is first of all, you can have more efficient workshops because um, with the template that I will show you later on, you have a structure and you have a certain flow that you can follow 
to have an efficient workshop with your team or even with your clients. Um, at the end of the workshop, you also have a validated prototype, so you know which um, data you have, you know which assets you have, and and that way you can start testing and analyzing everything. It also can serve as a checklist to make sure you don't forget important assets, reporting, um, optimizations to your campaign. Um, so it can also serve as that. And you have a clear issue and a goal because I can't stress this enough. Having a clear issue and uh, having a clear goal for your marketing automation is one of the most important parts that there is to the strategy because without a goal, you cannot score and we need a clear work a clear problem to work on uh, and finally it's also time reducing because when you get into it and you start working with this fr framework or the um the workshop um it gets easier every time and for working with a team it could be more efficient um but without further ado um no sorry i forgot one thing um, and i think the most important part uh, for marketing automation and i can't stress this enough is that uh, it's a building process it's a, a marathon rather than a sprint i think the most important part is that you start really small you start with a couple of flows and you learn those flows you um, start by setting up for example, a basic follow-up mailing for an event, um, learn from what you uh, see there, learn from the data, um, strategize everything and plan everything. Afterwards, start building the campaign, start building it up, um, start expanding it and keep growing everything. And this is a cycle that you will need to repeat several times because you can't have the perfect marketing automation and strategy or campaigns or setup in general um, from day one. It's important to do everything step by step and really go through it and think to it thoroughly. Um, the two things that I will sh be showing you today uh, is first of all the marketing automation strategy canvas and the workshop that we have created. Afterwards, I'll give you the links where you can download those and you can check them out uh, yourself. Um, Everything I'm going to show you today is in Miro. So if you want the link, I can also send uh, you that. But let's start off with marketing automation strategy canvas. This canvas, uh, the goal of this is to help marketeers and teams to um, make sure that they don't forget anything defining their strategy and then that they can optimize everything afterwards. As you can see, the canvas is built up in two different ways. You have red blocks. Those are your strategy blocks, and you have the bluish kind of purple blocks, which are your building blocks. Uh, the most important thing to always start out of is the problem. The first thing you need to do is start by defining the problem that you are facing as a company, um, as a team, as anything. It could be multiple of things. Once you have that problem defined, you will need to make it a goal because, okay, we have this problem. How can we turn it into a goal, into a goal something that we can work through? So it's important to define your goal in a smart way. Next up, uh, personas. So who is your customer? What are their behaviors? What's their pain, gain, frustration is also a really important part in this. To really know who your customer is uh, before you start creating uh, a strategy around them. Then we have the data part, because I think um, in today's age, data is everything, especially for marketing automation. Um, having having data-driven marketing campaigns is one of the best things that you can do at the moment. So the data that you have, be sure to use it. Be sure that it's connected in the right way. For example, if you're using Mautic, do you need an integration with a CRM? Do you need your Mautic data into a, a, a dashboard? Just think about all the data that you are having and according to that, which channels are being used because a marketing strategy is not only based on um, the, how can I say it, based on the data that you have, but the data needs to come in from certain places um, and you can't start everything with just an email. Sometimes you need to um, get people through your site through Facebook ads or Instagram ads. So make a clear list of which assets, you, uh, which channels you have there. Um, next up is the customer journey map. Um, once you have all the data and everything is clear to you, you really need to know, okay, in the different phases of the customer journey, it could be awareness, acquisition, activation, retention, revenue, and referral. Which are the the points that, which are the digital touch points of the customers? Where um, are they coming in? Where can we lose them? And where can we activate them again? Next up are the efforts. So uh, the assets, which assets are being used? For example, do you need some certain PDFs? And uh, which emails do you need? Which social posts do you need? Uh, okay. And then the reporting. 
because if you have a campaign, as I said earlier, data-driven marketing is really important. So for your reporting, which KPIs do you need to be measuring? Um, how can they be tracked? Do you track everything in Motic? Do you need to use UTM tags uh, in your emails to tr track for your conversion? Um, so yeah, that you have all data. And um, at the end, the campaign optimization, I think, I think it's one of the most important steps in marketing automation um, where you evaluate your flows, evaluate the goals, are they still in line with the business and you adapt and further personalize everything for the user and the data, which data can you reuse for other campaigns? I know this strategy framework is, it's not always that easy to fill it in. So we have also created a mini workshop for it that will help you with that. Um, we have two versions of it. I'll start with the one um, that we also started with and the most basic version um, that will help you fill in this framework. This is a, an example of workshop that we did with one of our customers um, and it works in a couple of easy steps. So the first step in this workshop is you place every, uh, we gather everyone in our Mara board and everyone gets like five minutes to define the different problems that they're having. Um, and as you can see, um, it was sometimes unclear what is a sales qualified lead or what is a marketing qualified lead. Um, how can we activate pro prospects? How can sales automatically follow up um, on certain prospects? Um, and I think one of the most important problems that they had, had is that there was no clear webinar flow. So they did webinars, but they sa saw that there was a lot of churn on those webinars. People were not always joining. Um, and there was just no clear way of working. So we let everyone dot vote and we saw that this was the most important um, problem for, for them. So we uh, handled that one first. This was our problem um, or the issue that we had and we changed it into a goal. So the goal that we had for this client was create a re reusable webinar flow, which activates attendees within the month. Um, so yeah, that's pretty clear and self-explanatory, I guess. Do you always need a goal to uh, work to? Next up is the persona. And um, this is really brief here, but I think uh, personas is one of the most important aspects of marketing automation. Most of the time we use a completely different workshop just to know the personas that start out of, um, yeah, this is in Dutch, but I'll quickly translate it. And um, what makes a person unique? What are they, their, um, their biggest frustrations, what's it's typical for the person. And by following this workshop that I can also send afterwards in the English version, um, you can create those personas and have them to work uh, with through the rest of your marketing automation campaigns. But I won't go in on this. Let's get back to the original workshop. So once you created your personas, you know who your client is, what their pain points are and what their interest is. For example, if he's really interested in tech, you can um, create different segments around um, tech news. Uh, yeah, that's pretty clear, I think. Um, and the next step is one of the most important steps is the uh, conversion funnel. So you see here we have the different steps, the awareness phase, acquisition, activation, retention, revenue and referral. Um, and here, I think the most important part is for the clients to really see how will this marketing automation flow work or how will this strategy work in general? Because it's not always the easiest to bring everything together and by visualizing it, we've learned, it's way more uh, yeah, clear for different clients. So for example, in the awareness phase, the client has a lot of referrals. They also have uh, Google ads running, Facebook um, and LinkedIn, uh, and Instagram organic posts and email flows. All these ads are for a certain webinar. So the people are coming in, clicking on those ads and get onto a landing page. On this landing page, they can uh, subscribe to the webinar by filling in a form. Um, they get redirected to the thank you page and then marketing automation comes into play. So the first mail that we sent, I think it's always the same. Um, with um, events, it's uh, the confirmation mail. So, okay, you've subscribed to this webinar. Next up is the real invite uh, or just one or two days before the webinar. Um, here is your invite, make sure to come. Um, and lastly, an hour before the webinar, we also send them a quick reminder. Um, in case some someone missed, we had created two. Uh, someone missed the webinar. There are two options here. Either someone gets an email, thank you for um, attending the webinar. Here is a recording, or they get an email. You saw that you missed the webinar. Um, 
here you can watch it again uh, on YouTube or wherever it is. Then uh, for the people who interact with it, they get a certain score and sales can call them up because they get an automatic notification um, and we can send them an offer. Um, next up, once this journey or this flow is clear, we will have a look, okay, if we have this, what is the data that we need for this? Um, how is the data stream process? Is there a connection need to put something? I think for this, it's a really clear example. You have data coming in from your social, um, your CRM, and your Google Analytics. Um, your socials are pushing data to Motic. Your CRM is also pushing your client data to Motic. And um, your socials are also directly pushing to analytics. And in the end, because this client specifically always works with Google Data Studio, because they want to have to clear dashboards of their most important marketing efforts, everything gets sent into Google Data Studio. Um, then we just list up the different channels. So they're using Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, Matic and the webinar platform and all the assets needed for this campaign. So the different emails, the invitation, confirmation, reminder, and the ads that they need, uh, a form on the site, and the LinkedIn post, uh, the social media post itself. Um, and then one of the most important steps, how can they track all this? And um, they can track the information for the email, from the form, how many people have filled it in, the attendee report from the webinar tool, and the analytics traffic. And once you have gathered all this information, you um, place it in this framework to get a clear overview of what you have and what is uh, necessary for this. And this is the best starting point that I have that really visualizes it to the client, what's important for them. And in this way, they can start um, themselves with the marketing automation strategy. Um, and here is also the optimization part. So what's did we recommend for the client is start a B testing with different email subjects uh, and evaluate the flow, play with it a little bit, try to send the reminder a bit earlier, a bit later, um, try to change around your uh, templates for your email. Um, yeah, all that information was really valuable for them. This was the first workshop that we've created. Um, I've noticed that this was not always um, the best workshop for each client because certain clients are a little bit more experienced or um, just when you have workshop with more people um, that's why we've created a second workshop that kind of builds further on this but is a little bit more uh, how do i say broader so it's uh, more relevant for uh, different people and this um, workshop works in five phases so first we talk about documentation then we talk about the goals we'll go sketch um, We'll create some sketches from different flows and we create the final step is L plan. Um, is create a plan. How can they really implement this and what's the best part uh, in doing that? Uh, the first phase is also one of the most important phases is to collect the information that you already have. What we will do here is um, what do we know about our users and what are their needs? Do we know what the users are currently doing? Do we have metrics on or previous studies? Um, and people just need to share their objectives or and group similar ones. And the second part will create an overview of the marketing landscape. So each attendee gets like um, gets 10 minutes to fill in all the information that they have about their contacts. Preferably, we work here with clear personas, but it's not always the case. And we um, get an overview of the marketing landscape. So what tools are they using? Are they using uh, a Drupal CMS? Uh, do they have another marketing automation tool at the moment? Just to get an overview of which data we can use later on. Once this part is clear, it's in most of the time it takes 10 minutes, we'll go over to the goals. So what do we want to achieve? Um, and this can also be um, which issues are we currently having at the moment. So um, each person gets a different field in the workshop and they can write their objectives down, down and share them with the group. Afterwards, we will uh, dot vote on them to see, okay, what is for everyone the most important goal to work towards. And once we have those selected, we go further into uh, one of the most important parts in the workshop um, where we will look from, okay, where we look, okay, this is the goal that we have. What is blocking us from this goal? So what is causing it 
that we don't reach the goal. What functionalities do we need to reach the goal? So do we need a certain technology added to our site? Um, do we need another tool to use it? It could be anything. Um, what data do we need to reach this goal? Is Do we have everything in our Google Analytics? Do we need some additional data? Um, and how can we measure that we reach the goal? Once this is done, we'll go over to the sketching phase. So we know, okay, um, we know our, our goals, our issues, and the data that we have, and we'll start really high level to sketch out our flow, and we will see how, uh, I'll show you how it looks afterwards, um, but this is to get an overview of how it could look like this part. Again, it's really important for clients to really see how um, something is visualized. So uh, it's not always clear when you talk about marketing automation. Most of the times people think, okay, it's just uh, automation of one email, but it's so much more than that. And creating the flows, showing where the different data streams come in, showing your digital touch point is a really good part in this. And uh, finally, um, Specifically in this case, this was a brand new modic setup, um, and we also work agile in different sprints, and we create um, a, a strategy or a plan um, based on a time map for the clients. Um, how does that look when you actually do such a workshop? This is an example of one of our clients. Um, so in the first phase about documentation, what do we already know? Uh, we know that the client has at the moment a, a, a contact base of around 40k contacts uh, and they have them already split up in different segments and personas so that's really good uh, it's a client that is a bit mature than most um, so they know that information and their biggest distinction from the uh, different uh, contacts is the sector that somebody works in it's a b2b client that uh, delivers uh, chemistry stuff so there's chemistry products for everything around water for people who work in labs for people who research different colors and just an industry in general so once we had this went further and had a look at the marketing landscape uh, the clients had already a lot of tools they, as, as i said they're pretty mature and um, they had google analytics a drupal 9 website they had their crm linked to drupal 9 they were nine, sorry, they were using Send in Blue, um, AdWords, LinkedIn ads, um, and some more tools. So the marketing landscape became clear to us. Then we went over um, to the different goals, and there we saw um, some of the goals were to generate more leads, boost customer satisfaction, reducing costs, more efficient digital campaigns. Um, so once we had those goals, we went over and um, had a look at them and really go deeper in why can't we reach this goal so for example the first one was about lead scoring generate qualitative leads and gain insights in us in our clients and um, so what was blocking them from this they had not enough tooling they didn't have enough data and um, the sales mindset was not there at the moment because um one of my colleagues always says uh it's marketing so it's uh uh uh, sales and marketing together and I think it's really important for a company that sales and marketing work together really close because if a sales does not a salesperson doesn't see the value of a lead or a lead that came in through marketing automation or through anything that's not going to work out because they really need to believe in the tools that you are using so that was, was what blocking them what functionality do they need they need extra tracking that wasn't offered in sending blue so they would need more tracking um, to really track the behavior on the site and on the emails and they would need uh, lead scoring implemented on their website what's also possible through Motic. Uh, where can the data be find, found um, there's a lot of data in the crm so maybe we need, would need a connection with Motic and the crm the contact data and the behavior of the visitor and how can we measure it all uh, well once we have a lead scoring model in place we can create an automatic uh, distinction between sales qualified lead marketing qualified leads and Motic based on their activities um, and we can lead uh, measure the different stages of the leads so that's an example how we did it for this uh, for lead scoring we also did it in this case for how can they increase conversion um, but I think that explains itself how it works. I think you got the most important part of it. Next up um, is the event flow. Um, this example is also from a webinar campaign. So um, 
again, this is just to make everything visible for the client. Um, everyone is coming in through email, social, or um, organic posts, shows social paid posts, and referral. Um, people get on a landing page and fill them in a forum. We get an extra opt-in to maybe send them newsletter or activate a certain trip campaign. The client gets a confirmation mail, uh, an invite, and a reminder. If they did not fill in uh, or did not come to the webinar, they get an extra email in case you missed it, otherwise a thank you email, and then the user gets sent to sales automatically. Um, and because this was a brand new Mautic, we also um, split everything up. So we would like need two sprints to do the basic Mautic setup. In the meantime, we'll do some workshop with the client to further investigate the framework that was needed for those clients. Um, and the third sprint, we will uh, complete the setup of Mautic, implement the integrations, and improving this track all along. Um, I hope this made a little bit sense to you. Um, let me get back to my presentation. And I think that was it. Um, I want to thank you all for attending. Um, if you want to discuss the strategy framework or the workshop a little bit further, we'll be in the solid booth at uh, Modicum. Um, you can also download the framework from our website. Um, it's under our resources. And if you are interested in the my reports, you can always send me a message on LinkedIn and I'll send you the link to that. Thank you all for attending. That was excellent, Tom. Thank you very, very much for that. Um, I'm actually glad that you spent a little bit of time going through the goals. Um, I think a lot of people completely miss out on having clear goals uh, when they're doing projects there. So thank you very much for diving into that portion of things. I really appreciated that. And um, I just put a link into the chat <laughs> with the uh, where people can go ahead and download the framework. And can you uh, can you tell us a little bit about what your LinkedIn uh, profile is so that people can reach out to you, get that mirror board in case they want to deep dive into this a little bit. Yes, I'll send it also in the chat just to the haste, but uh, I'll send the link to it. That'll be great. And um, thank you for doing that there. Um, if anybody has other questions that they would like to be able to have answered, uh, please take a moment to uh, go into the Q&A section and then just simply type in your question. This way we'll be able to get to it. Uh, the, uh, the first question that we have here is from Madeline, and this is specifically regarding that webinar client that you had. Mm -hmm. Do you send the two hour before the event type of reminder with Mautic? And if yes, how do you go about doing that? Yeah, I think uh, in this case, the client really was looking for, a, how do I say, it, a general template to use for their campaign, some campaign that they can copy each time. Um, I know for events like webinars or um, even just online talks, it's not always at the same time. So that's something that we adapt um, every time and we just send a specific email. Uh, we always change it in the campaign by sending a specific email at a certain um, hour there. Excellent, excellent. And uh, I, I have a question that came up here. Mm -hmm. is, there, is there a certain knowledge level that you need to have before you start using this workshop? Um, I think it's a, a good step in for people who are new to marketing automation because it covers most of the important factors that they are um, using marketing automation. And if people follow it, they will need some marketing knowledge to know what uh, a customer journey is or what a persona is. But I think it's something that a lot of people get started with uh, from the start. All right. All right. And uh, I don't know if other people have any questions. Please put that uh, directly into that Q&A section. But my other question is about the uh, um, the framework itself. I know you mm -hmm. broke it down into a lot of different sections. Uh, is it always the best strategy that you guys have come up with or are there alternate strategies besides that framework? Yeah, um, I think it's different with uh, every client if you for example have a client that's just getting started with marketing automation it's a good way to get started if you for example eh, we had the case we had a, a big client that was already using a mail platform and they had a certain strategy then it's not always the most interesting i think the best part to do and eh, the best thing to do is just always look at the needs of those clients and cover with them what are the different pain points and it's not always 
a certain format that you need to use there. Most of the time, uh, just a good conversation to really understand the needs uh, of the end user is the most important part. So it's not always the best solution, but it's good to help people uh, get started. Excellent, excellent. Well, it looks like there's not any other questions that are pending at this point there. So um, uh, thank you again very, very much. And we're going to be seeing you again in just a couple of minutes there um, where there's a uh, separate, uh, the next session that is going on on this day, day one in room one is growing a business with Mautic. And you'll Indeed. be back to that one, if I'm correct, right? Yes, it's together with my colleague, Friedrich. Um, and it's a session about uh, one of our clients where we build a custom solution and that automatically generates emails from Drupal into Motic and what we learned from it and what mistakes you should avoid making. So it's also, I think it could be really interesting. All right. Well, thank you very much. And thank you for everybody attending. And this is going to be one of those recordings that will be up online in YouTube in the upcoming weeks. So uh, if anybody wants more answers for this, you can always give a playback there. And thank you again, Tone, and thank you no for problem. everybody thank else you. running in today. Bye, guys.